Boom. Yes. We are live. Yes. We it's are happening. live. Like it's a happening. One. <laughs> Okay, All right. Hold on. We're waiting on you, Nicole. Yep. yep. I know. <laughs> Hurry up. All right. Ready? Let's do it. Woo. Coming in hot. Nice. <laughs> this is the beginning of a sitcom. Ding, ding, ding. Hello, Fade hello. into the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome to Actors Anonymous Podcast. I'm your host, Wee Sam. Co hosting with me is Jordan Burbank. And our awesome, awesome guest today is Ian Bowen. Thank Thanks for you. coming on, man. What an intro. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Ian, you have some awesome credits. Uh, currently, you're working on Teen Wolf as Peter Hale. And also, you've got Chicago PD, Major Crimes, Breakout Kings, just to name a few, man. You've got such a killer, killer experience and resume. Yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky. Um, I've gotten a lot of great roles and I've had, you know, things turn into more than they were supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and you know, every once in a while I'll go on IMDb and look, you know, just to, to scroll through and, and, uh, actually not too long ago I was looking at it, I was like, wow, I've actually done some, I've done a lot of work. I've been really beyond lucky. Um, I know that. And, um, it's nice. It's nice to have some accomplishments for working so damn hard. Well, a, a little birdie told me that uh <laughs> you like to prep like do a lot of prep for your work and auditions is this true uh yeah absolutely well, um what is the benefit of that for you well okay so for me when i get an audition um you've got you know you're gonna go in mm -hmm. and you're gonna have a very limited amount of time to show them whatever you have so the amount of work that you put into it beforehand uh, all compresses down into whatever that you know two three minutes might be while you're actually talking and in my theory is that the more work that you do the better you're going to be um, the more that you've thought and stored up and you've got this nebulous cloud of information and character and whatever mm. that's there somehow that will connect with the words that you're saying when you're with another person and you then just talk right. and it does um, you know you can simply read the lines when you go in and I know people that just do that. I just, I prefer to do everything I can. Um, and then when you, the same thing when you book a job and you know the character, you're always developing them, you're making choices, decisions, putting that in the toolbox and hopefully it makes you better. You know, hopefully it gives you, you want to be good at this like anything else. Yeah. Um, so why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to work as hard as you can? This is a very good point, man. Uh, the, and. There's a great uh, book, uh, which I'm going to quote just a, a little sentence from here in a little bit, um, from Mastery by George uh, Leonard, and he talks about the importance of practice and how you can get into this almost trance-like state and sometimes whenever you're like rehearsing something over and over and over again. I don't know if you've, you've ever experienced this, but going over a scene like You've got, done it once, then you've done it five times, then you've read over it another ten times, then you've, you realize you've run over it a hundred times, and then like small subtleties become these like really, um, these uh, these like significant things where you're like, oh man, after reading it a hundred times, I never noticed this one thing. Like, oh, I'm so glad <laughs> like I went through all that just to notice this tiny little Yeah, it's thing. ironic that you do that much work to essentially, what I chalk that up to is to letting go so that that thing can kind of be revealed. Uh, we're, what we're doing is we're simulating human life. Right. Which is ironic because we all know how to do that. We do it every day, but there's no script. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're going to say. You respond based on the sort of sum total of your life and experiences and who you are and your attitude. And that's just your shit. That's your life. You, you do stuff. But when I give you pages and I say, here's another life, just do it like that with this guy. Then we go, whoa, I, now I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I got it do it and when you do it hard like that it's not as good because you're acting when you let it go you can let it as a, you know this and this then those things can come up because you get out of its way does that make sense and that's the benefit for me of doing that and that's why you see actors get so much better in characters over the course of seasons and shows like if you go back and watch the old pilot episode of some of your favorite shows you're like damn bro <laughs> and you go well how come they got so much better as well because they let it go, and then that's why I say it's ironic. We're just pretending to be people, 
I'm like, well, that might, that should be easy, but it's not. It's such a fine balance of like, because you are putting in all that work, especially in your rehearsal process, you know what I mean? And then you're like, it's, I don't know, maybe it takes time and experience to kind of be, get, get easier at letting go? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, because you want to, you know, again, this is by part of the, the reverse bad training of being actors. You get an audition, you have to go in and you have to do it and do something special because you only have a little bit of time. And the idea of going in and letting it go and just being is unthinkable because you're like, well, I can't afford to just do that. I gotta show them something. I gotta act, I gotta perform. Mm -hmm. And so we try to do that forever. And then once you, after you do that for about 10 years, <laughs> which I did, you realize that's not the right approach. <laughs> Differently. So you do all the practice rehearsing, you do all that work ahead of time. And it's very famous advice that teachers say it all the time. And then you let it go. And then you walk in and you sit and you know the words and you watch the other dude or the other girl and you live with them in that moment. And that's when mm. shit gets, gets going and things. I rehearsed it a hundred times. I never did that before. It's just there. Um, and that's awesome. If you get the opportunity to do that, which sadly in work, in working days these days, you don't get to do that. That's just, mm. it's a, that doesn't happen. It's too bad. I love how the last like five or six or seven episodes, whatever number it is, every single guest that we, about living in the moment has mentioned that, like just being present. And I think that's also a key to what you're saying, because you can't be thinking about what you did in rehearsal necessarily. Yeah, like how you to want to deliver this line, and and or you know the exact cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. You can't be thinking of those things. You have to just be with them. Well, it's kind of like a fighter too. Like he, you know, practices punching over and right. over and over again. So when he's in that fight, he's not go, okay, I got to make sure yeah. I torque One, my two, uh, three, <laughs> A, B, duck. It's it's you just you fight. Right. And it's it comes out. At least I hope. Well, that's the joy of, of like the practice part of it, which I really miss doing in a theater space, especially mm -hmm. with like a community of actors. That that theater, that rehearsal space where you're in there for like four or five hours, just mm -hmm. going over and over and yeah, over. Yeah, that's great. Ah, oh, I miss that so much. And you don't have the uh, leisure sometimes of that on set. Sometimes it's uh, let's run it once for blocking and then shoot. <laughs> that's it. Sometimes you know you you haven't even said it out loud with another person. You, you're doing it the night before or whatever and you get there and it's okay boom and you do one or two and then they're like okay we're moving on and you're like whoa 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 we're not that's i'm I just warming up not time and oh. that's so dude <laughs> that's happened to me so many times i can't and it's so frustrating for me because i'm like i'm driving home i can't tell you the number of times it's happened i'm like ah oh, i should have done that I should have said Absolutely. it like, I, was, I would have been so much better. I always tell people the best audition take you're going to have is in the rearview mirror on the way home. Every time. Because when you leave the audition, you don't throw the pages away and go like, think about dinner or what you're doing later. You're re re saying the scene out loud in the car all the way home. <laughs> every I do. Every time. And then you'll look in the mirror and you'll do it. And then you'll hit it. And you're like, that was it. That was the one. And it's always in the car. And that's just the curse of being an actor. You, you don't want to give it up or quit or finish. I'll, I'll say... I'll be doing something and I'll start saying words from an audition three months ago that I still remember. And I'll still be like, what if I should? And, and that's just, and I think that's a good thing. I think all actors should want to continually work. Dude, it's like, it's the gym for you. And I'm so it is glad to hear you say that because I still recite monologues from Shakespeare when I did in college, Absolutely. just by myself. Just because I'm like, oh, I love the way I'm fine. I'm still finding new things in it. Absolutely. And it's been years. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting way too pumped up dude, for this. I get know. pumped up. I know. You have to be pumped up to, to try to do this job and stay sane. So when you can, pump. But it's just so exciting for me. And I, I don't know if you feel like that sometimes in your performances, uh, you know, when you do for Teen Wolf or something else, but those golden moments, you know what I mean? Where you, you kind of, you know, it sounds cheesy, but like you lose yourself, but th at the same time, you're really connected with this other person and it's just you're so in the moment and then you, you feel like you're shining afterwards and that's the only way to describe it for me yeah you know you get moments of like like euphoria and, and really high when you're working and then all of the the rigors of the situation and the circumstance of the long hours or the cold or the you know whatever something hurts or mm -hmm. you got bruised up that will all go away and you'll just be in the scene with another person it's like real life and then it finishes and you snap out and you look at each other and you're like holy shit Dude, we just that was we just did something and everybody feels that and that that's when you go that's why we work yeah. and the other tw you know 10 or 12 hours of that day you might have just been you know Ooh. getting in or out of the car or doing whatever but there's those moments and i just had one recently 
and then and when you look up in the other and they're like yes 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 and then you go <laughs> yes and that's enough and that will carry you for a while oh my god dude i'm getting te- i don't know why i'm getting teary i'm getting all excited <laughs> for some reason on, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> is oh, like i have to ask you has acting always been your number one like since you've decided for like a career um so there's been different points within my my acting timeline where I decided certain things. Uh, I fell into it at a very early age, got my first job at 13. And then for the next 10 years was sort of in and out, went to college, came back, wanted to play baseball, came back to this and that. And then when I turned about 23, 24, I decided I gotta do this or not. And then I put all my eggs in the basket and said, this is now my career, good mm-hmm. or bad, this is what we're doing and there's, there's nothing to fall back on. So that was, but it took me, again, it took me 10 years to, to get to that, that place. Um, and people say, you know, and I often end the story by saying, and I just haven't quit yet. <laughs> so that's Well, there's like I'm a, at. there's like a passion, like, you can, like everything you've said, it just seems like you are so enthralled by what you do. Like you are just like, you seem like you absolutely love it. I feel lucky to still feel that way. Um, when I get projects, even when I get auditions, you know, you'll start reading through pages and you'll think about, God, this is a lot of work and I don't have a lot of time and it, and it gets frustrating and then you'll start going and then you'll start seeing stuff and you'll be like, dude, this is good. And then you're like, okay, I can do this. And, and it starts to build and then it's exciting and you're, you pace around the apartment and you're doing it and you come up with stuff and then it's like, yes, that's it, that's it, I'm ready. <laughs> and then you get to go in and that's enough. That's almost like a day of work. Oh yeah. And for me, that's just fun. Maybe it's because pretending is easier than hard work. I don't know. <laughs> or what but I, I I still have a good attitude which thank God is one of the hardest things to hold on to yes I'm so glad you mentioned that and what what keeps you in that good attitude is it because you're working and I mean that's always that would keep anybody in a good attitude but actually no I take that back <laughs> because there I know people who are working and who don't have good attitudes and so what for you is the thing that's kind of your your foundation for that um, so, you know, a, a, f- a friend of mine gave me some really good advice uh, about eight years ago, and, and she said, this business is going to be hard, and it's going to chew you up. Don't get bitter. Mm. And I was like, huh. I was like, oh, I'm not bitter. I can't imagine becoming bitter. What, I don't know. Whatever. But that's always stuck with me, and I've recognized moments when your attitude and how you feel about you know life in the world and what you've been given and what you haven't and what you want is not matching up and i can see how you can start to get like bitter and so i see it coming and i fend it off um and that helps me be mentally healthy it helps me be happy which those two things are the hardest thing i think for any actor to be is to be balanced mentally and and to have a healthy attitude about how you perceive your daily life because all this business does is take from you and hurt you and beat you down and pull your soul out and just it's awful it's awful so how do you why would anyone do that and how do you do it healthy and so i it's a daily thing i have to be mindful of how i'm thinking not just what i'm thinking about but how i'm approaching everything and i know right away like you're being an asshole and you're thinking like this you're behaving like this and i have to monitor constantly because it is not to get too dark, but <laughs> no, no, this no, no. job will destroy you. Well, do you do like meditation practices? I mean, because you know, that does take a, a good amount of self control. Um, no, I don't meditate. I just, I just sit and I, I just examine myself. Maybe that is a form, but I don't, not like spiritually meditate. I just go, okay, what, what's really going on with your head? Mm. Know what's real and what's not. Know what you can change and what you can't, and then I choose to just be positive. Wow, and that's. Yay. It yeah, sounds yeah. <laughs> it sounds great. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it because I know a lot of actors that really have really bad attitudes and they're not happy. Yeah. And I'm like, you could be happy. It's not because you're not working. It's because you're thinking a different way. Mm. It's not as easy as like, oh, you can be happy if you want to. And like, that's kind of bullshit. But there's definitely some choices to be made. It's easy to be mad. Yeah. I think you have to force yourself in a way to kind of be ha- like be positive on things. Like you can... I feel like there's always an opportunity that you could um, book something or really land something, but I think a lot of that has to rely on the mindset. And if you're constantly being like, oh, I failed at this and I, I messed this up, and, and you keep thinking like that, it's like you, you can have a million failures and still, if you just keep keep 
pushing yourself forward knowing that the success is on the way. That's gonna be like one step closer to like, it's even half the battle just to like, it's like lying to yourself until you make it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that, of, you know where they say fake it till you make it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pretend you feel this way until you forget that you don't and you will and that is, that is the headspace and you and if you can do that um you will be happy and you will reach hopefully your full potential whatever that might be right but that it's the only way you can you won't reach it if you're always pissed and always bitter and always like oh, about things instead of like okay all right and you know it's just it's oh. that simple and it's that hard at the same time what, what, there's a poem by you know who Rumi is the iranian poet no I might have known some Okay, examples, that's, that's fine. Um, he talks about, he has this beautiful poem that I mentioned on air a few episodes ago about how, it, you know, this life has, uh, like, uh, the, the, you know, in your life, bad things happen, right? Like, a jeal you know, you get jealous or, like, some, uh, just a lot of bad things happen. He says, welcome those feelings into you. Welcome them. And because they're probably going to clear your mind out for something better i love that philosophy and i'm like ah oh, so like you know like breakups like every you know most people go through some type of sure. horrible breakup and i found from my friends that the people who just kind of like just dealt with the breakup you know were sad they're just like i'm sad I'm, they they got over it much better mm -hmm. and instead of trying to always fight those feelings off just kind of be like okay it's here I'm really depressed. All right. Yeah. And you're able to kind of think about it more logically, maybe, and it helps you overcome yeah, it. Yeah. Mean, no, a hundred horrendous breakups. Yeah. And um, and when you when you sit in that, and, and like you said, I feel awful, and this is terrible, and I'm going to own it, and then I'm going to put it on the shelf, and I'm going to not let it own my life, right. and then I'll visit it later. But, you know, you just sort of compartmentalize it. And then it, that can have an ownership of everything you do, yeah. and that's super important with acting because you get you get little dumps every job. Pour out your heart, your soul, mm. all of your love, and they say, oh, "No thanks." And you're like, "Whoa, what do you? No, no, no what do you I'm, I give you all of me." And they go, "I don't want it." And you go, "Whoa!" And it's you know it takes your heart out, and then you have another one on Wednesday. And then you do it again Wednesday and then every it's like no it's constantly I don't know what the record is one out of you know 50 jobs maybe one of 100 so that's a lot of so if you can't deal with that that crushing you're gonna be dismantled and many most people are and I've, I've seen it happen all the time and they leave town they leave the business they do whatever it, it's it is um, merciless it makes me think of like you you get to meet it's almost like you're meeting so many people. You're creating these characters, you're going into the room, and you get to meet all these people, and then you never get to see them again. <laughs> like, you just, like, you literally just, like, lose touch with that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex I mean, for the auditions. Yeah, like, just becoming part of that character and, and trying to, you know, like you were just saying, like, you uh, you go in and you, you miss out on something. Like, but each of those each of those roles that you tried out for, like, it's almost like you've created something and, you have, yeah, and you give it everything you have, all your effort, all your ability, and in your mind, all of your talent. So it's all you know. The the, the more you put into it, the harder it is to be told no because they're rejecting more of you. Sometimes yeah. if if you walk in, you're like, well, I didn't really work on this, and I don't really care. Blah 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 blah. Read the words, and they go, you no, know, you didn't get the job. You're like, so, so what? I didn't care. The more you care, the more you can hurt. It's like a relationship. So uh, my advice to my friends their actors and you know we still all struggle with this and we talk about mm -hmm. it somebody will have like a particularly close thing they've get, been in five six times the one other person it's life changing and they call me and they say but well, I didn't get it and I always say the same thing the victory I think this is the best advice you can give any actor uh, the victory is not getting the job the victory is in the work and the work is not being selected it's everything that we talked about before that comes beforehand. That is why you should be an actor. And if you do that, you have succeeded. If you rely on the booking the job to, to say you're well, you failed before you even go in because you will be destroyed every time. So leave it in the room. Do all your work and you won. Walk in, show them, say thank you very much, and you walk out. 
that's it. Oh my God, I got chills. Okay. And I still can't do it, but if you can do that, then you're going to be just fine. I promise you. God. Have you read, okay, well, I'm going to do an experiment here. Have you read The Book of Five Rings by Musashi? No, I haven't. Okay, you just stated like one of his key principles, the universal truth. Let's call him. Let's then you call won't him. have his number. Well, he's, Is he up? He's been dead for a while. I think it's okay. Let's that. join hands and light a candle. We will summon him. This guy, a little brief story, and I know for my listeners, I've mentioned him before. I'm going to mention him again because you should go read his book if you haven't. Anyway, his name is Musashi, won over 60 life and death duels. He was a samurai, started fighting since the age of 13, uh, uh, fought oh. throughout his entire life. And uh, that O was pretty intense. Like, like I think that's, that's that's some pretty solid action. And I'm now thinking like 11th century, and I should probably pick up this book and, and read about what this man oh, talks about. This guy was a beast, no to doubt. say the less, to say the least. Um, anyway, um, so at one point in his life, he literally just said, "You know what? I'm going to go into the woods and figure out why I'm so good at what I do." <laughs> <laughs> Spent years, years by himself in the woods, just contemplating, practicing his art form more, and just made this book, the, the Book of Five Rings. And he, th there's lots of parallels. He talks about why it's important for like samurais and, and warriors to learn art, to learn pottery making, to learn like uh, farming and all this stuff because there's like you find universal truths and all these things. And one of the things he says is the best fighters in a life and death duel don't think about winning or losing. They just think about fighting in that moment. And so it's really cool to hear you say that. That is very similar. Yeah, it's like right in parallel with that. The best actors, they're not thinking about, I'm going to book this job, or I'm not going to get this job, or I want to impress these people, or these people don't like no. me. They're thinking about in that moment, that work, that life. That's it. That's it. Simple. It's, it's so, so simple, right? It, it is satisfying. And when you can do it, it feels amazing. And I tell you, when you walk out with no stress and you don't think... Uh, let me call my agent and see what they said or let me get feedback because you know you did good You know you did the work yeah. and you don't need them to validate you and tell you oh we loved him it Doesn't make any difference because your work is your rule. Your, that's it. It's already been done And then people say well, what about booking the job? Well that will come as it may but that's not what it's about So if you just want to book jobs, this may not be the, the line of work for you maybe it yeah. is maybe it isn't but I'm, it's gonna be infinitely harder on your head and your body and your mind uh, if you approach it that way so again easier said than done but if you can do that and leave it in the room yeah I mean literally you will be doing cartwheels when you walk out to the elevator <laughs> and there's a thing and then other actors are like dude what the hell I just went in there and you're like and then yeah. they all mess up because they're so confident. <laughs> <they got it. laughs> I'm sure no. someone's done that to me before. I was like, damn, he's like, hmm. <laughs> exactly. They already drove him in the room. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is well, there, sorry, man. I was going to say, is there ever a point that you feel like your career has taken a turn? Like in like a positive way or that you've reached another tier or another, another, wow, another plateau in your career? You know, certainly most recently when I got, uh, when Teen Wolf started rolling, which is, you know, uh, like five years ago, um, and we, I realized it was going to continue, you know, the character was, uh, you know, dead at the very beginning and then was brought back to life. I took that as an extreme compliment. And as it, you know, kept moving upwards and the popularity of the fandom began to grow, I was, I thought, wow, this is kind of something. Um, it, you know, whether or not that has anything to do with me as an actor, or how good I am or I'm not, I don't know, but it's definitely tr trending upwards. I've got a lot of opportunities and exposures and chance to speak with, you know, kids. And so in that sense, that was a definite upward tick, like no question. And it continues to, to maintain and to, to grow. So I am undoubtedly blessed to have been able to do this you know it's it, it's like so at the, you know the end of the first season my character Peter Haley gets gets killed that guy dies that was it and so after you know doing the season with everybody and you know you spend time off and you're like Shh, you know and that's gone it's like a breakup like they left you yeah and you're heartbroken and 
as I imagine it in the writer's room, you know, they're all sitting around talking and they go, da 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 da, what about this, what about this? What if we bring Peter Hale back? And then there's a moment where everybody mumbles and they think about it. And I always liken it to like a quarter, like sitting on its edge and somebody just taps the table and it's gonna fall one way or the other. Just a chance and it fell my way. And somebody else said, yeah, I like that idea. Maybe we could we could do this. And then it started percolating and, and then it caught fire. And then all of a sudden he's back. And that literally changed my life, changed my career. If it had fallen the other way and somebody had said, uh, you know, I don't know that idea. What about, what if we bring this person back? And then they go, oh yeah, let's talk about that. And that moment, gone. And so that quarter falling, what is that? I don't know where it comes from, but that it went my way and that changed my world mm -hmm. because he was ostensibly gone. And I think about that all the time, how precious, like you could be on the edge one way or the other. And I don't know what controls it. I don't know if it's, pushed one way or the other way, <laughs> God, if you will, or what, but it did go this way, and so I am running with it. But it's important to know that, I think. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that it was, it, to me, it's it's interesting. I was going to say, wow, they must have really loved you to bring you back from the dead. I but you so. went the whole other way of, like, it was literally a coin toss. Could have been. <laughs> so like, I mean, that's yeah, how I true. think about it. You, you never know. know. You know, um, for instance, uh, another example, Chicago PD. Uh, so we shot, we shot this the first season, and this great dynamic was was brewing between me and uh, Jason, the main character. And we we, had, we were like adversaries, and he was like the hero cop that did bad things, and I was the legit by the book law abiding cop that was in his way. So I was seen as like the anti hero, the bad guy, if you will. And, I'm, and I, as an actor, I'm thinking, why does everyone hate my character? He's doing everything right, and he's not, you know, he's following the law, and he's not. Uh, you know, assaulting people, and he's being the, he's actually being good. <laughs> so at the end, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to build up to this wonderful dynamic and chess match between these characters, you know, for the second season, and it's going to be awesome. And uh, we start the second season, and turns out they ship him to jail. Like, and it's so <laughs> awkward the way that it's done out of the blue, like my character had murdered someone, and they just arrest him, and he's out of the world. And I was like, wow hell and I remembered oh there's a quarter in the writer's room somebody said something and they go oh I know what we can do if we just do this with still and then we can go and it went the other way and it caught fire that way and the quarter fell and just like that it was gone and so so what you're saying is befriend the writers <laughs> <laughs> in long, in a, yeah I mean you know you say that I laugh but this business uh, I guess suppose like so many others you know people say oh it's who you know it's not who you know it's who knows you and if the people that know you, if they like you, they're going to want to work with you, of course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to work with my friends all, all the time. And if you certainly, if you piss the writers off on set, or if you're kind of a dick, they're not going to want you to be there. And But you don't kiss their ass either because they yeah. think you're a weirdo. So it's just a, <laughs> well, you know, you, you don't? Yes, yeah, so we just, so, so no, no ass. No, no okay. ass underline, that. No, underline well, that. Well, <laughs> you know, you said something that, that really sparked a uh, question in my mind. And... Sometimes we possibly have a sense of entitlement to we must know why things happen. For instance, like not getting that job, you know what I mean? Like you're talking mm -hmm. about the, the quarter going one way mm -hmm. or the other. Or like why something, why did this bad thing happen to me? And it's like, well, why did it happen? I have to know why. It happened to me. I, I must know why. And, and the reality is it, re reality of it is, no, you don't. You probably will never know why a lot of things happen to you. Um, and I think the more important thing is, what do you do when those things happen to you? I agree with that. Um, recently, I was spending some time with a friend who was uh, a veteran, and he had served in the Middle East, and he'd done a lot of things. And a lot of his friends didn't come back. And when we, you know, sit and it gets late and sitting by the fire, and he would kind of zone out and, and he would talk and, and he would say why why did i come back why did i instead of them i'm unscathed and then the situation is always the same thing it doesn't matter why it is and it's your obligation to live because life was given to you you didn't choose it uh you're stuck with it but you have an obligation to live it so you can wonder why and spend your days doing that that's fine but that is not going to get you anything you have to go forward so you're not, like you said, you're never going to know, and ultimately it doesn't make any difference why. If there's a controller, you won't know about it. So 
move forward. Um, and that's tough, you know, I'm certainly no fun selling like I'm, I mean, have the keys to the universe. I no, certainly no, don't, man, but just some awesome, things I believe. No, man, we're just having a yeah. cool conversation. And this is why I love doing this podcast because it, it, it starts percolating. Percolating is the right word, maybe? I like it. Uh, I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> I, be I believe it. And it's just these questions start coming up. And one of the best things acting has ever done for me is made me a better person. It made me understand. How so? You sure about that? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so one head you nodding, know, no, one head shaking. That's, you know what? <laughs> they, know me be, they know me better than people. No. Um, no, uh, one of the best things it's done is for understanding why people make the choices they make. For instance, when I'm going over lines and I'm trying to dissect this character and I see in the script what looks like a turtle, a turtle, a total, <laughs> a total curveball or mm -hmm. a left turn, like, why the hell did this person take this choice in life? Mm -hmm. At first, at, when I started off early in my career, I'm talking about like high school and college, uh, when I was training, I was like, man, this is, this is stupid writing. Why would somebody ever make this choice in life? This is not real. I would do this. This is not good writing. And then I lived the real world and experienced mm -hmm. life and go, oh, I just made that same choice that, that what I thought was an idiot making, and I understand and now I why get. I made that choice. I'm like, oh, oh. And then when I see people, you know, making stupid choices in life now, I'm like, no, I, I can kind of understand where you're coming from, dude. Mm -hmm. And best of luck. And listen, to everybody listening to this, everybody has their own demons to fight, and everybody's on a different level of understanding and enlightenment and experience in this lifetime. So you just gotta be courteous and respectful to everybody because you have no idea, you really have no idea what anybody's going through. Absolutely, um, and like you just said, the ability to self-examine mm. what you think about and to, to go like, what is going on here? What, what used to normally piss me off or whatever isn't or something that isn't is now and you have to go, why am I thinking and feeling this way? And As opposed to, sort of being a passenger in life and, and um, I'm kind of getting off track here, but that ability to turn in and go, what am I doing and what am I missing and what don't I know? As opposed to, I know tons of people that don't want to know anything that they don't already know. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, dude, not, you cannot advance. And so for me, when I start acting like a dick, I'm like, okay, step back, what are you missing? And to take it back to acting, you know, like this writing, I'm not sure why it doesn't stop flowing, I don't, it's getting made and I know it's the smart writer so what am I missing as opposed to going I wouldn't say it like that I don't want to do this this character you know, I can make excuses all day long but if you find a reason or well, think why might they say that then that's going to open up stuff and you'll find it because it's I promise it's there they don't make dumb shit that that, are, that a dumb writer wrote it's you were miss I promise you as an actor to all you actors you are missing it so if you realize that and look for it then you find it but if you don't think you can find it or it's not there then you obviously won't I, I agree with you. I think 99% of the time, actor is missing it. You, you haven't found it yet. Totally right. agree with you. I think also it's the easy excuse for uh, some actors to feel like, well, this is bad writing. That's why I'm not getting it. Now, you need to work a little harder, buddy. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I, this is a great story, and I love it. I had a friend come to me, and he had a, um, well, he needed some help with a scene. It was for soap opera. Mm -hmm. And soap operas get bad raps nowadays. And, sure. And because of the past or whatever. But honestly, last four or five times I've come across an audition for a soap opera, whether I'm helping a friend or I'm auditioning for it. I'm like, this is really juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, oh, like it's, oh. You know, when you read something, yeah. you're like, there's a lot of stuff I can do with here. Okay, there was a nice shift here with this character. She says that, oh, why does she say that? Oh, can I email my agents for the whole script? And it's like, okay, no, okay, now I have to make something up. And maybe I should ask the CD for that. And then like, it just, there's just so much juicy stuff in there. I have no idea where I was going with this. Well, I just, what a great <laughs> attitude, guys. Sorry, I just got... I want to audition for soap. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that? Uh, what a great attitude to have. That, oh, wow, this is good. There's so, I can do something with this as a... It's a gift to think, to look at it that way. Because some people automatically decide, oh, it's a soap, it's shit, before they even look at mm. it. And if you already think it's shit, I guarantee you by the time you finish it, it's just confirmed for you. Mm. So, again, back Absolutely. to attitude. How do you, how do you, how do you think? What's your platform from where you go every day? And I mean, listen, I'm no, per I'm not perfect at this. I read stuff all the time where I'm like, ugh, this is horrible. 
I, I would have written it differently and I can tell you tons of reasons why it should be different and that doesn't serve me it absolutely doesn't just make gives me anxiety makes me not want to work on the project that and I have to struggle with that all the time and so yeah. attitude and mood and and I'm, I'm gonna pay you a compliment now and oh, you do thanks. such a good job of walking that really tight tightrope with uh, I'm not mentioning any projects or names in particular but certain uh, lines that you know you've said and you delivered man like I'm like ooh, that could have easily went south <laughs> do you know what I mean I mean yes. we've all seen those performances where like man he he made that work I, kudos to you I man I appreciate that <laughs> and I I respect that so much because it takes a lot for an actor, especially to walk that tight rope. And thank God that the editors used that take or the director chose to use that take. Absolutely. Because will... that's something actors have to realize. Um, for my work on Awkward, dude, I would do like multiple alts, like alternate takes. Sure. Alternate, I think. Um, multiple takes for, uh, for this character. And it's like sometimes it's over the top or like really big. And then sometimes it's really subtle. I'm like, what the, which which take are they gonna use? So, yeah, choices. Um, I thank you for the compliment. I, I will say that after you play the character for a long time, it gets so much easier. Uh, mostly because they write to you, and so it's like it's a groove. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're kind of mm -hmm. just so it's so much easier, and right. they they know your voice and you know the characters, and it's uh, and so very infrequently do you have a line that you're like this. I just it's like a roadblock that you'll hit it and you'll go. You'll be flowing and you got the scene and you're pretending and you'll get someone, you'll know, speed bump or whatever. You're like, I, have to, I don't want to just understand this. And then that's when you have to go, okay, what, again, what am I missing? And then you can, you know, do your thing. And then, but even, there's even still times on set where they'll, where we bump heads and they'll be like, I, it's like this. And I'll go, it's not like this. I, it's like this. Trust me, I know. And we'll, they'll be like, well, let's make a deal, yours and mine. And then we'll decide, you know, we have, we have options, one for you, one for me. And of course, there's not much you can say that's a good deal. Of course, they're going to use what they want. The best you can do is is your best, and then they choose whatever takes they want. Absolutely. Uh, but thank you for the compliment. Uh, of I do course, appreciate yeah. that. Um, I'm real quick. I, I we we got listener questions. I just want to hit on just a couple more things, dude. It's so so awesome talking with you. Yeah, that, that's so sweet. I could do this. This is fun as hell. Uh, we're we're gonna have to have you back at some point. That'd be um, great. Because I, I I didn't even I literally got this much into <laughs> what I want to talk about. Um, you said something on your directorial uh, debut debut with Morning Love, The Toe, uh, or is that two, those are two separate uh, films? Those right? are two separate films. Great. Um, Morning Love, it, that was a like the final project for cinematography class at UCLA. Right. And so I don't really consider that a directorial. It, it's really, that was a photography example that turned into a motion picture. It was really meant to be oh, a series of awesome. stills. And I asked, Professor, can I can I do this motion picture? And he said, sure. And I said, can I add sound? Can I cut? And he's like, dude, do whatever you want. So it turned into a school project. It's not. I don't really, you know, I didn't. There's nothing to direct really. It's a, there's no dialogue. It's just a woman roaming. But I do well, love it. I'm just wildly proud of it. I still like watching it. It's like two and a half minutes, and I think it's lit beautifully. So that was the the premise of it. Well, let's say the seeds of the. Uh, the Absolutely, story, that got me thinking. Wow, this is possible. Uh, the Toe, which I'm very proud of, um, they premiered this earlier this year at a film festival in downtown LA and I, it was the first time I ever saw it in a movie theater. Full screen with sound and the whole mm. thing. That was um, wonderful. Our next um, festival is the Breckenridge Film Festival in September so it's kind of moving along the circuit. And, oh congrats man. You know wildly uh, thrilled with the, the, re the reception that it's been given and what I'm doing now is expanding it into that premise into the feature film uh, which is wow. going to continue on with J.R. Bourne. Uh, as our lead, and uh, that is like the, my daily focus as I'm falling asleep and every moment that I'm awake awesome. is filling in that story, um, and that is important. Well then, I'll save the stuff because it's it'll be a shame to rush through what I wanted to say. Yeah, you whatever did, you want. Uh, no, no, uh, w uh, when you said, when you create the content, you have control of the story, and then it just sparked some questions. I mean, what type of stories do you want to tell? What kind of stories are important? And then um, something that came up a lot of times when actors want to start projects, they're like, well, that's already been done before. And uh, that feeling, you know what I mean? Of like, well, I want to do this sketch. Well, it's already been done before. Or I want to do a podcast. Well, there's lots of podcasts out there. Sure. And it's like how, how to counteract that feeling. and 
and so I want to save that for the next time you're on, if that's cool with you. Yes, I mean we. I mean I could talk for an hour just about that. <laughs> just on a quick, on a just want to want to say one thing about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, this a friend of mine, um, Dana Brunetti, just retweeted something on Twitter the other day that I looked at. It was some other guy's article that says there are only six stories. Hmm. Everything is an extrapolation of that. And I was like, oh great, I had heard the story that there was only like 12 or 13, but there's only six basic ways you know, that you can have a dynamic. So then I thought, well, thank God. So we're all copying something or other. Doesn't matter, get it done. Finish your product, everyone has an idea, everyone has a script, show me a finished film. Absolutely. Very hard to come by. Okay, so now we're- Absolutely. No, 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 it's all good, man. Um, um, listener questions. Uh, you wanna do a spit fire round, or what was it called, Nicole? Rapid, rapid, rapid fire. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. <laughs> I'm an spit immigrant. Fire. Spit fire. <laughs> Hello, my friend, the spit fire round, Let's go. Spit fire is a, is a British airplane that helped win World War II. <laughs> uh, Let's do this. Oh, okay, I got some of the questions. Uh, what's your favorite music right now? It's sent to us by Duda Dempio at Ziam Ven Eno. At the moment, I like pop music. I don't care, whatever, I'll admit it. It's fun to listen to, it's catchy and it's easy. Um, and it's just, I kind of want, people are like, well, why do you like that? I'm like, because it sounds cool to me. That's it. So I listen to, I listen to the radio mostly. Okay. I, I will go, I will surf through, I've got nine presets and I'll go through anything from, you know, hip hop to country to, I, I like Taylor Swift, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and whatever catches my ear, it's just I want fun, cool, kind of uplifting, summery beats. You know, I want to, I want feel good music. Um, that that reminded me of, and I'm not going to make you do it at all, but the, the, it was a really cool line. And I, I was watching some of your uh, your the 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 what are they called VidCons or the Comic Cons? That you the, had, they're just the, conventions. The, the, yeah. Conventions, the con. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that line where you say, and it's so cool. Um, uh, I was never the alpha. I, I am always the alpha. Do you I, know what I'm talking about? I do know the line is, I will always be the alpha. I will always be the Shouted alpha. Shouted from a tree stump oh. uh, <laughs> into camera so many times I couldn't talk the next day. And wow. they always loved it. Say, can you do that? Can you do that? And I, and I used to do it just because they would, you know, they would get the giggles. But now I, I have to kind of do it in a whisper because it. Right, right. <laughs> it just blows out the, the voice box. Well. Okay, this is gonna be so nerdy. I liked it so much, and it was like so like alpha. It was so like intense that I was like, I want to practice that line if I was this character. And <laughs> yes. said I, I was screaming it in the mirror. Shut! Uh, no, you did it. I swear to you, I'm a, I'm a nerd like that. Whenever I like watch TV shows, I'll be like, okay, what would I do if I was uh, uh, cast in this role? How would I? Act it out. I do it in the in the movie theater. I'll whisper a line that I just heard. <laughs> like, you're saying you're gonna yell in a movie. Oh no 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 no! no. Could like, you imagine? I am the alpha. <laughs> so, um, Whoa! Like, guys, I need to I need to feel better about myself. Excuse me, excuse me. And no, not mine. But I'll watch a movie and I'll see another actor and I'll be like, oh. and I'll do I'll do their lines. That's and I I is. love that quality about you. That's that's very good. Okay. So just give us give well, us uh, give us an example. Oh, absolutely not. Man. This is, How do you think I feel? I, I'm not gonna make you do it. That's why oh, when I geez. saw you do it, I was like, oh man, I feel bad for Ian. This is gonna be hard. And you're like, you were so nice. You did it. But uh, Nicole, remember that song I let you listen to the other day? It's like, my bitch got a body like Alba. What's up, dog? I'm the Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, yeah, we've got a, we've got a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Helen, H E L E N E, at Mad Ness Liam. I think these are, are Hi, Helen. <laughs> are they making these up? These are European <laughs> fans. Uh, they, they, I think so. Uh, what are you guys doing up? <laughs> no, no joke. You have the most loyal fans. They're staying up. Some people are up at two or three a.m. wanting to watch uh, this live, man. Seriously. Getting it's their questions. Four, it's five a.m. Yeah. yeah. Europe. They love God you. bless you. Do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> right after the show's over. <laughs> uh, one day that you will never forget. Um, one day, jeez. That's hard. Um, this is not a rapid fire question. No, there's not. Uh, so the, I'll take the first thing for the interest of time that comes to mind. I go backpacking with my uncle Tom, who's uh, my mom's brother. He's mm. he's uh, a bit older than me, and he's um, a mentor to me, and we've. One of our things is to put backpacks on, walk into the woods and spend three, four nights and just kind of being there. And the last trip that we took to uh, the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho, 
we went in, it was just madness. And then we hiked up into almost a glacier through the snow line wow. and just, and then back in that day, that was kind of the reason that we work is that we get to do things like that. So that mm. still, I'm like, man, remember when we remember that day? And so we think about that one. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's I, cool. That's cool. Um, Astley at Feel with Rodin, uh, what's, who is your favorite character on Teen Wolf? Uh, I like to watch Dylan O'Brien do styles. He's, he's my favorite, I suppose, character, and I love to study what, as the man that I know, the actor, I like to watch what he does with the character. So that is my favorite, uh, most sort of benevolent person, I think, that, that, I, that I root for. Yeah, cool, cool. And Valerie K at Valeria underscore 27 underscore K. <laughs> Stop saying the names. I know. I, I, just want, I want to make sure they know we, we said their stuff. Uh, what role would you like to play? Like, is there like... You know, the first thing I think of, although I believe me, I know it's well outside of the realm of possibility, but my like dream fantasy character is James Bond. I just have a wild fascination mm -hmm. since I was a kid. I got introduced to the films and uh, I've always just that's it like that kind of magic so that character obviously I know it's not plausible <laughs> but it's plausible hey, what are you talking about mean, no not, not even close you gotta be British and second of all you gotta be a movie star in order to do it so but just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff I want to do at work every day or an Indiana Jones which is my yeah. that's my favorite film Raiders of the Lost Ark and that you know mix of you gotta have a lot of humor and kind of snap with a lot of, you know, physical um, kind of, uh, what do you call it? Suspension of, of belief, reality that things can happen. But when you put those together, I am like throwing popcorn and going, yeah, I'm, I buy yeah. it. So th that's it, those two. Love it. Actually, I have a question. Sure. What is the most taxing physical thing you've had to do for your performances? Uh, one thing that pops to mind, I did an episode of CSI Miami and I got tied to a large chain anchor from the bow of a boat by my feet upside down oh, and then lowered into the water and I had to stay there upside down as the anchor slowly pulled my, what was at that point, dead body out. And the way that the water goes into your nose in the, in the bay, it was like oh. some shitty Manhattan Beach Bay with like crappy oily water and hold your breath and not like get the thingies that was almost undoable and i've really pride myself on being able to accomplish things like physical <laughs> stuff that day i almost was like can't do it you know got to me right side up or something that was horrible being suspended on wires in a uh in a tornado for young hercules years ago like and flipping around and fighting that was excruciating um, wow and those are the Good two God. that i still remember Dude, that, that's, that's so gross that that water was in your nose. Yeah, that was awful. Oh my god, that was awful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, um, Ian, thank you so much for coming on the show. Anytime. Man. Seriously. Absolute awesome. pleasure. Um, Appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah, we're going to definitely have you on. And um, again, uh, people can find you at Ian Bowen and uh, on Twitter, correct? I think so. Yes, okay. at, just at my name, at Ian Bowen. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man, so much. Anytime. Appreciate um, you guys. Jordan, thank yes. you. You're welcome. Congrats on your short film kicking butt at yeah. the uh, festival. Yeah, we what? streamed Silly. twice at Outfest. Holy uh, cow. We are now going to two more, total of six so far. What's it awesome. called? It's called Ultra Blue. It's, I will uh, do some research on it. It's uh, the director. It's a it's a love letter to his twenties. It's uh, it's our catchphrase is uh, you won't always be twenty something and lost. And it's uh it's the part of a, a feature that we're going to be developing right now. That's so, exciting. Yeah, it's real. And exciting, you, you produced so. this film. Yep, uh, I'm the executive producer for it, and we're working on the feature right now. We're, uh, we're in the stage of 30 pages in. It's going great. Finish it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really exciting. Good. So. Yeah. Nicole, thanks for doing what you do. I appreciate it. At Nikki592. Thanks to the GBB Studios. Gabe, kicking butt. Uh, thanks to all of our listeners, everybody on Facebook Live. Uh, people, yeah. you don't know how much I love it when you guys tweeted us saying how much you love the podcast, how much it's changed your lives. So... Tweet us more, stuff like that. Uh, we love it. Uh, this is podcast is for you. And much love to everybody. Always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Sweet. Awesome. Let me this up. All right. Um, we wow, were... that flew by. <laughs> I know, right? Ooh. Thanks, um, guys. I'm so sorry. I forgot. I